I mean, what advice would you give to younger people who are looking at the world ahead of them and they're mm -hmm. trying to decide, do I go work for the corporation? I mean, mm -hmm. even like the, the illusion of a secure job, I think, it's a, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people recognize it, that it's not like what it used to be, it's mm -hmm. a kind of model. Or, the, you know, do I take the path where I'm, you know, I have my own business? Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Like, how, how would, like, uh, Jason or... Mm -hmm. or uh, you know, comes up to you and asks you, Dad, uh, what do you think? What would, how would you answer? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think you have to recognize the person and sort of their nature. You know, like my wife, for instance, she she's very content with being told what to do and just kind of doing a great job at it. She has absolutely no desire in in having any kind of leadership role. You know, so you have to recognize, you know, are you more of a leader or more of a follower? If you're more of a follower, then I think it's, it's, it's difficult and it would be difficult for that type of person to, to have their own business because they're more comfortable in just doing a good job for somebody else, which is, is perfectly okay. Um, so I, I would say first you have to recognize the type of person that you are and, and maybe even as simply as that, you know, are you comfortable in a leadership position or are you more comfortable just sort of being told what to do and doing a good job? Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable in a leadership position, then I think the, the sky's the limit and you can be an entrepreneur and do whatever it is that it, that it takes. But you, you have to have, uh, be very flexible and, and really, I guess, have a sense of balance because a lot of times I, I feel people get so focused in one area that they lose uh, sight of the big picture, you know, and I think if you can keep the big picture in mind at all times, then everything else just kind of can fall into place. Um, but it, you know, it, it's, it's hard. It, it's hard to tell people what to do or how to be. So I, I, I think if you know, it's, it's an old cliche, but sort of follow your dreams and whatever you think that it is that you would enjoy doing, just uh, give it a shot, you know, and realize that nothing comes quickly. You know, I've seen a lot of people in, in my business and even some of the people that I went to school with were very successful, but for a short period of time, you know, whether it's because they burnt bridges or, or they I, I'm not sure what it is that they did that all of a sudden they weren't able to continue, you know. And, and I think one of the, the reasons, I think, for my success is that I, I've always just kind of taken things one step at a time and in and, and a sort of conservative approach where um, just like a slow progress but sure-footed, you know. And again, that is what's comfortable to me and the type of character that I have and the type of person who I am. Somebody else, you know, would probably be bored to death, you know, seeing that kind of slow growth and progress. So it really is all about the personality, I think. Were your parents, either one of them, entrepreneurs? Um, I would have to say my mother, although she was a, a stay-at-home mom, she was always in all kinds of things, you know. Small things, uh, but, but she was always involved in a lot of stuff. My father, on the other hand, he was always a, uh, a corporate man. And he, even though he was at a high, you know, VP or president level, uh, he always had somebody that he answered to, so he was, un I found that he was uncomfortable being the guy, but he was comfortable being the second or third guy, you know, so. Do you think your uh, entrepreneurial characters rubbed off on your kids, Julianne and Jason? It's kind of tough to tell right now, I think. They're still pretty young, you know, 10 and 12, but I, I certainly joke around with them. I mean, I, I obviously feel that for me, you know, being in a leadership position uh, is, is uh, 
I would say, more fruitful, if you will. I mean, it allows you uh, more options. And so I would like to see them feel themselves as capable to really do whatever they want. So I sometimes joke with them, are you, are you a leader? Are you a follower? You know, it's like, what do you want to be, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, oh, follower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't yet. Well, what, what do you think about the, 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 the direction the U.S. is going in regards to, you know, where you'd like to see your children be mm. 10, 20 years from now? Do, do you think a lot about that? Or? <sighs> to be honest with you, I, I don't just because I'm, I'm thoroughly confused. I mean, I'm... Uh, I, I'm confused too. Yeah, I'm I'm a fairly conservative, and and I've always um, kind of thought that my ideals align more with the conservatives or a Republican Party. And after seeing what's happened, you know, in these last elections, and where this sort of um, open, un, unregulated uh, business concept has gotten us, it's getting me to think twice about what that means. And, uh, you know, I guess you, you always think that people are just going to do the right thing and, and better to not constrain them uh, so that they have the ability to really uh, do what, what they feel is, is best. But I think as we're finding out, you know, some of these people that have been given so much um, free reign, I guess, have taken advantage, and it's, it's kind of sad. I heard something this morning, actually, that was kind of interesting. It's like, it's like saying having a stop sign without police. Mm -hmm. You know, after a while, if everybody knew that, yes, there's a stop sign, but there's no police, then you probably would just run the stop sign, you know, or most people would. Uh, but the fact that you know that police are out there, you know, you, you stop because you don't want to get a ticket, you know. And then they were saying that about some of these, you know, executives that, yes, there are all these rules and regulations in place, but no one to really uh, oversee them or to, or to hold you accountable for that. So they just basically ignore some of the rules that are set for business. So it's just... It's just really sad, and, and I'm not sure, to be honest with you, what, what it all means in the end, I think. Um, um, well, maybe it's just well, a part of the growth process that we have to all go through as a society. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, I think so. But, you know, the, the socialism or the other side of the, the end of the spectrum is I, I've never had a good feel for it. And actually, it was at WGBH where I had my first experience with that, and, and it really made an impact on me because the, the business, uh, there were 800 employees, of which I believe 600 of them were union. And when I arrived there and started working, I had to join the union, basically. If you weren't management, you were part of the union. And went to a couple of meetings and and the mindset was just really strange to me and even to the point where you know i i would get a job to do and i would be told okay you have five hours to do this job maybe it took me two and a half hours so i would go to my superior and say well i'm done what else can i do they're like well that's supposed to take you five hours so just keep working on it or do something else until it's done in five hours. It just made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. You know, I, I mean, I, I felt like I've done the best job that I could. I just was quick about it. So I was ready to do something else so I continue to learn and continue to grow as opposed to just kind of sit around or slow down just because that's the way it's supposed to be. It just made absolutely no sense to me whatsoever.